Okay, I think we can begin because, well, why not? <laughs> hello, 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 and nice to see you on the Saturday evening. Um, why the stream? Because there are like two or three reasons, and mainly because uh, I have a new setup I want to test out. Uh, a lot of stuff you will see today is actually the first time I'm using this setup, because today's setup will be with not one, not two, but with three cameras. Yeah, baby! Some time ago I got me a 4 HDMI input uh, grabbing HDMI grabbing card and now kind of I have like you know this camera I have here camera over here I have a camera over here by the way uh Louis me FPV uh, some of the today's stream hopefully will be done with the oh I think that was the mistake Ooh. oh fuck okay so we know that this thing needs fixing and we're gonna probably fix it during the stream so uh, I'm using the HDMI output on the media mod however I know that there is an app or a driver for the GoPro cameras when the GoPro cameras can actually act as the uh, webcam so this is doable however the last time I checked it was extremely laggy the la delay was like one second or even more and uh, I had actually quite a lot of problems with the setup so I gave up and I have the media mode for the like uh, last one year now and uh, if I have to I'm just using the uh, media mode by the way uh, today's stream will be a pato stream I'm drinking <laughs> only one drink However, I am. It was supposed to be a tequila sunrise, but it's not a tequila sunrise. It's just a tequila with juice and two different syrups. Uh, still, yeah, okay, why not? Let's call it a tequila sunrise. It has the tequila, it has the orange juice, and it has the blue curacao. So, almost a tequila sunrise. Uh, let me finish. Uh, no, let me turn on the top camera. And I'm, my setup is not fully completed because the top camera is powered with this uh, chunky battery. I do not have the uh, constant power for this camera yet, so let's do it like that. Okay. Let's do it like that. Let's do it like that. Okay. Let's turn on this camera, let's turn on that camera, and let's see if... Uh, oopsie daisy, so no. Before we will begin, I will, I think, have to fix one of the cameras. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Nothing a good wrench cannot really fix. Lovely. So, let's check if the right camera is working. Yeah, you see? You see, the right camera is working. It's actually pretty nice. Uh, the problem with the GoPro's cameras is that by default, they display you the uh, OSD, even if you don't really need it. So, we have the right camera and we should also have the top camera. Yeah, come on, you see? This is actually pretty amazing. We have everything and everything is working fantastic. So, why the stream? Um, that's actually pretty simple. Some time ago, uh, I got the Atom RC Dolphin. Uh, full FPV setup with everything uh, Atom RC, aka Skyzone, sent this to me as a token of appreciation. And uh, then I started this, I think this was May beginning of May or something like that. I started building this, but since <laughs> the same weekend, basically, it's in the state of not being even close to being completed. And I just have to start making stuff so I can start making new stuff. So today we're gonna see uh, how far we can go. I already did some preliminary work on this setup, but no electronics, nothing really installed yet. So let's see how this thing uh, will work out. Uh, this is fully improvised. I have not planned for everything. I have not checked everything. Everything will go as, let's say, full, full improvisation with nothing is really 
pre-recorded and I even, I even have not checked in what's the state of this airplane. I know it's there, it's prepared, uh, but first uh, but first, let me check because I recently I destroyed some of the tools. Uh, I was just trying to apply too much of the force to my pliers. We have to now also see if I have tools for the job. Uh, okay. Okay, so what do we have over here? Um, this isn't exactly what I wanted, because uh, when I checked on the internet's the dimensions, I thought that those pliers will be slightly smaller. Still, looks like a pliers one might use, but this is not really what I wanted, too bad. I wanted something that big, that big, maybe even slightly smaller. But okay, and the second set of the pliers, eh. One more time, not really what I wanted, but will have to do. So this goes into the trash. I'm not returning this, by the way, because I ordered this thing like three weeks ago and it was just lying somewhere, because, because why not? So uh, instead, let me get the Atom RC. What a mess. Let me get the Atom RC and let's see, see how far we went and what is prepared, what it's not, what's not really prepared. What we have? Stickers, but we will not worry about the stickers uh, today. That's definitely too early. Uh, apparently I have uh, prepared the wings and, uh, uh, but okay, uh, this is not really glued together yet, so we will probably have to glue that. Looks like I installed the servos, or the servos were installed, I don't really remember, but we have servos, so that's a good sign. Uh, we also have a servo on the second one, okay. And now the Atomercy itself. It's a nice, nice touch, by the way, from the Atom RC that they actually have the actual box. I also have in a very similar state the Nano Drag. Uh, Nano Drag Boomer Kit I got almost two years ago uh, from the right wing themselves. Uh, because the Chris Click, I think that's the name of the guy, uh, saw one of my videos and said, Oh, you liked my mini drag, so you're gonna like the Nano Drag as well. I said thank you, and then I waited three months for the delivery to be done because this thing spent more than two months in the uh, with the customs. So that was actually pretty, pretty absurd. Okay, user manual. Do we care about user manual? Probably we do. Uh, some extra foamy stuff. Okay, some extra bits and pieces over here. And I even do have a propeller. Ha! Huh. Interesting. So, the box goes away and let's see what we have. Yeah, this fell out. So, what we have? Um, we have the battery strap, we have some of the plywood elements over here that... This is this looks like a matter mount. Uh, this looks like the part for the battery, some rubber bands, some more plywood cut elements, some stuff, some more stuff, carbon spar. I wonder if this carbon spar is something like I can get locally, because assuming that one day, because this, this just has to happen, assuming that one day I will just break the spar, will I be actually able to get this thing locally? So the main spar is 8 millimeters. Oh, I should be able to buy the 8 millimeter carbon tube. It looks like a normal tube. And the short stops in here because this the main spar goes here here are two additional spar that hold the wing and how this thing is locked i will have to figure out how the wings are actually locked to the fuselage uh, so this goes over here this goes over here and as a result you have a beautiful uh beautiful 
we have a beautiful wing attached. So yeah, and those small spars are six millimeters. Also should look like the pretty standard size, so we should have no problems at all. Um, okay, so what we have over here, looks like I have not installed anything over there, so... Uh, so okay, and what we have? Ooh, I found the, I found all the electronics. So um, the decision I made back then was to go with the as much of the electronics as was provided by the Atomercy themselves. But oh, this is what they provided back then as the flight controller. Uh, the only target I was able to find for this flight controller was for the beta flight and uh, rather, well, building a... <laughs> it's not that you cannot really build a flying wing or the aeroplane with the beta flight, but uh, the fact that you can doesn't mean that you should because uh, beta flight uh, is capable of the, only of the stabilization and only if you set up the mixer correctly. So unfortunately, playing with the beta flight and the flying wings is not really the best idea. And I have no idea why the Atomer C back then sent me this uh, flight controller, which even I could not make a target for the INAV if I wanted, because of the target uh, of the uh, of the timer uh, allocation, uh, because all the four outputs on this flight controller are on the same output. So not even possible to have... Uh, <laughs> Not even to have uh, motors and the servos on the on the on one flight controller. So, so unfortunately, that was a that was a bummer, and uh, we will not be using this thing. I think back then, I decided that I will use this flight controller, and the flight controller I have over here is the Matek H743 wing. This is probably an overkill. Uh, but but I have it, and I have not really used this flight controller for like year, year, year and a half. So uh, why not? I will just use uh, this thing. And I even think I connected something over here. What is what is soldered? So I have the S4, S3. I have no idea why I have servos attached over here. Hmm. Interesting. What was I thinking? I have no idea what was I thinking uh, with this uh, setup. I have a GPS. Ah, okay. This is from the old setup when I was testing something. So we will have to remove the, the wires I soldered over here. And we will have to install the new wires. Mm, my idea is that because I want to have the wings uh, detachable, uh, it's kind of nice to have detachable wings on the detachable, uh, fully detachable, uh, yeah detachable wings. So my idea is that uh, I will, okay, something like that, that I will install the headers for the servos. Uh, that should be a nice way to handle this problem. So I should be able to remove the wings whenever needed. Okay, and just plug this thing in so we will have a nice flying setup yeah definitely we're gonna do it like that i already have the gps press solder so we're gonna remove that we're gonna remove that we're gonna install the header for the servos we're gonna install the esc do i have the esc oh the camera uh, some screws that were part of the set but let me take this out okay so this goes away pigtail oh replacement horse horns for the servos and we have the esc esc looks like an esc how many amps 30 30 amps I think with the 30 amps ESC we should be fine. I don't even think that I have anything bigger currently on me. So for the beginning we will go with the 30 amp ESC we have over here. And they gave me the motor. And as a matter of fact, I'm not sure. Because the motor they gave me is only 2306. 
2000 kV. So the kV is relatively low, so this thing should fly with the 4S, no problem. However, however, this is a pretty small motor. How do you think? Should I take this motor or should I search in my box for something bigger? Because honestly, I'm not really sure, you know. Uh, 2306 doesn't look like a proper motor size. So, figure out. Uh, so, let me make a poll and let me ask the question. Should I go with the 2306? By the way, this will be using the 7 inch props. So, probably not the best idea to go with this. Should. Uh, what have I done? Should. Yes. Should I? <laughs> oh, Pavel, Pavel. Yeah, so this poll sucks. We will be not doing this poll again. 2306 or bigger? 2306, go bigger. So, uh, there is a poll, so you might answer the question and let's decide which motors should I use. Uh, personally, I think it's a good idea to go with the bigger motor. Because really, like, this is only 2306 and some wires. I have no idea what those wires up to. By the way, uh, next week or maybe in two weeks, we will do another build live stream because... <laughs> Mm, probably next week I will make a video about my new drone uh, that, by the way, you will be able to buy the frame from me. Uh, not from me, but from Amazon Productions. And I also decided to make a experimental version of this drone, <laughs> which, will, which will be the Y4. You know, uh, in the rear, uh, two motors on one arm uh, running almost coaxial. Not really coaxial, but uh, almost coaxial. I always wanted to have something so experimental, so we will see how this thing will be working. I hope good, but uh, you never know. In the meantime, in the meantime, uh, people are started to answer for the question. And looks like so far we have 50-50. Let's give... Uh, Bunker fast the poll is should I use the 2306 motor from the set the one over here I'm kind of afraid that this is slightly too small of the motor size or should I search in the box for something bigger? Mm, because who knows? By the way, I love this soft box. It's amazing with the grid and uh, I finally invested in the LED light with the bowens so I can attach different things and I do love how the grid, uh, even the simple grid, the material grid like here, uh, what it does to the light. Love it. Love the effect. Really, absolutely love the effect. Uh, look how dark the, the wall besides me is. Amazing. I like the look but setting this up is kind of irritating. I have the box. Half of my stuff half of my stuff is in the boxes. And uh, we will be able to see if I have any, actually any motors that I can use over here. This is box with the motors. And as you can see it even has some spares, some empty space. No, no, no those because those are teeny tiny. Um 2205, no. Those, those are 2212, but I think they are 3S only and I want to run it on 4S, so no. Nope, 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 nope. Uh huh, this one, 2207, nope. Uh. 2213, but this is 3S only. Those motors will overheat on the... By the way, those were extremely shitty motors, multi-star from the uh, Turniji, <laughs> uh, from the Hobby King. So no, not this one. Hmm. Looks like I have a problem because I do not have the motor I can use instead. 
I should be able to get somewhere 2805, but with 1200 kV, that will not be enough. Okay, okay, decision has been made. I will just go with this 23. Uh, 06 and we will see what's gonna happen because nobody knows what's gonna happen I mean it should fly and I do think that this is kind of quite uh, How to call it uh, aerodynamic setup, but you know, you never really know so uh, Let me check. Okay, the soldering tip is here. Let's power up the soldering iron and let's start actually working on something because step number one is to prepare the electronics and when I prepare the electronics then we will go uh, with some extra extra stuff over here by the way are there any interesting uh, topics uh, in the chat uh, okay, uh, Filey51 successfully made and Dolphin last weekend with many unsuccessful auto launches from setting error on my past uh, that resulted in some rear fin repairs. Yeah, uh, this is, I'm not, for example, I'm not using the auto launch. I'm just like throwing into the air and it's usually, uh, oh, Bonafide the Pirate. Hello, mate. Uh, Bunker Fast says that he loves <laughs> me. Okay, man. <laughs> And uh, was procrastinating watching my channel. Well, procrastination is actually I love to procrastinate. I love to procrastinate. Uh, I I should not be procrastinating as much as I am, because I really like like to push stuff to the uh, like to the later. But yeah. Uh, well, go bigger, go bigger. So we will not go bigger because I have no motors. Mm, I have, I have the motors uh, in Berlin, but I won't be going to Berlin uh, for the next few days. So that is no go. So we will just have to start uh, working with what we have. Okay. Okay, everybody can see everything. So let's starting. Let's start to work on the flight controller. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna lose those small screws. That's one of the problems with the Matic boards. Uh, that they very often uh, get lost in the places. I, I should have some spares, uh, because I should have some spares. If any, uh, if I will lose them, it will not be a big problem. Still, kind of irritating. So, uh, what are we gonna do right now? Right now we will have to remove those wires, remove this wire. Okay, let me take this away as well. And let's start soldering. By the way, if anybody asks what's the best uh, temperature for the soldering iron, my short answer is that this is 350 degrees Celsius, uh, somewhere like uh, slightly below 700 Fahrenheit. Uh, yes, many people will say, oh, but this is too, too much uh, because the solder is solder, solder, depends where you live, uh, melts in much lower temperature. Yes, this is correct. Uh, but it's not about the temperature. It's about the uh, amount of the heat you can uh, get to the solder joint uh, itself. And because the smaller even you get with the size of the soldering tip, uh, then the heat transfer and the heat capacitance of the tip is getting smaller and smaller, then it's just better to say have something extra. And I'm using this temperature for like, I don't know, since forever, for 20 years, I'm using 350, maybe not forever, uh, let's say like 10 years, uh, 350 Fahrenheit, uh, Celsius, so slightly below 700 Fahrenheit, and it's working just fine. So so, so I think it's a good, uh, good compromise um, between everything. And if you don't know which temperature you should use, go with 350. You should be happy with the results. Yes, you have to uh, solder for slightly shorter, but this, I don't think this is... 
a problem. Um, the prop, the prop, the prop, the prop. Uh, inside of the set, I had the Dal Prop 740. Or it was not in the set, I'm not really sure. Uh, but I will use this, this, here, here. <laughs> Uh, multicam. Uh, this is my first stream with the multicam and I'm very often confused which cam is actually on at the very moment. So I will go with the 740. I think it should be absolutely fine. Okay, mm. now. now we will need some wires because we will have to solder stuff to the different stuff. And now, how sh long should be the wire to the... Fuck. By the way, I don't think this stream will be for kids. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that I will be swearing quite a lot during the stream. So, uh, the flight controller will go here. The GPS will go somewhere here, and the ESC, well, I will put the ESC, and the ESC will be over here in the bottom, so we have a cooling on this thing, so that much of the wire to the ESC should be enough. Okay. I should get a bigger desk, I think, because this one is absolutely... Not big enough, but over here I have no possibility to have something bigger uh, because it's a very small attic and also this is my my office and our bedroom and that unfortunately means that uh, I just have no possibility to to have the bigger workshop right now however we are, I think I mentioned this for a few times we are finally starting to build the house. Uh, I mean, like last year, no, almost two years ago, we bought some land close uh, close to where we are living. And uh, this year we started to get all the permissions and the project, well, we have the project for the house and the plan for the next few years. Because this thing will definitely take a few years uh, is to build a house. And the attic is mine. And because one of my conditions to pick the the project of the house was to... Okay, I have to have a nice attic. Uh, then almost half of the attic is already reserved for my workshop. And also there will be a reserved space in the garage. Because the, my second condition is that we need a big garage to have a place to have a lathe. Because I always wanted to have a lathe. Not always, for a few years. So uh, we will. I will just have a lathe over there. Yep. Okay. So the wires to the ESCs are nicely soldered. Now, this will go like that. This will go like that. Hmm. Do I have enough of the of the wire? Um, yeah, I have to find another box. Wait. Let's go through my box of crop. Uh, okay, I have some... Uh, what size this is? 14 AWG should be fine. If I will find also black 14 AWG, I should be fine over here. Uh, what's that? I think this is a foam for the goggles I don't have, so I'm gonna throw this thing out. Okay, I have some extra 14 AWG and this uh, original wire is 16 AWG. Hmm, so should I go with 14 or should I go with 16? 
I think I will go with the 14 AWG over everywhere. Somehow I feel that the energy losses will be smaller with the 14 AWG. So we will have to do some soldering. And that means that I should probably change the soldering tip because I will not be soldering those kind of biggish wires with the soldering tip I used already. That's also kind of common mistake many, many, many young solderers <laughs> do is that they just use too small of the soldering tip. Heat transfer. If you want to have a nice heat transfer, we just have to use the thicker wire. Not a thicker wire, yeah, thicker wire. And when we want to have a thicker wire, then we have to just have slightly bigger soldering tip. So the soldering tip has a slightly more heat capacitance. And if we have enough of the heat capacitance, then the soldering tip will not get cold too fast. So I will use this one and we should be ready to go. I hate replacing soldering tips, by the way, when the soldering uh, iron is hot. And I also think I will slightly boost the temperature. Okay. So, uh, we will have to sacrifice one of the minuses and one of the pluses. Let me switch to the top cam. Or maybe even let me switch to the right cam. That should give even nicer view on what's happening. Uh, if you don't have yet, get yourself a, a set of uh, such a stripping device for the cable. It really is much nicer way to strip the cables than doing this manually. Maybe not the model I have because it's kind of poor quality and uh, kind of is problematic even to strip this uh, AWG 14. Uh, but a good quality should really be a nice, nice addition to to your workshop. I was al al almost always using the uh, my teeth to strip the wires since like I was the child because I loved soldering when I was a child. But most probably uh, this is not the best way to do it. Uh, so dedicated wire stripper is really a nice addition to any 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 workshop. Um, let's also add the soldering solder to the wire itself. Uh, there. Okay. So there does not really want to flow, but okay, it should be fine. We should be fine. Just let everything heat up nicely. And when everything is heated up nicely, and starts to flow just should be enough so that's that uh -huh. and now time for the second wire to the esc awg 14 here we go One day I will have to really invest in some kind of the device to get the fumes out. Luckily I am not soldering too much. Uh, because if I would be soldering really like a lot, like doing this for a living, then working without the fumes extractor would be a very, 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 very bad idea. 
I have a fan right now working next to me because from all the lightning over here everything got slightly warm so to cool me down oh, what a ugly what a ugly blob I'm not really proud of what I did over here I'm absolutely not proud of this soldering joint I would even say more it sucks it's below below my professional yeah I'm not a professional uh, professional standard maybe now eh, ugly ugly like hell uh, the mr. E the KV is uh, 2000 2000 I think yeah 2000 KV uh, this thing is not in focus but but yeah this is 2000 so let me switch to the top gun okay ugly joint really ug one ugly soldering joint I I should be punished for this joint but you know what I don't care I once knew two guys that got enemies for life because the one criticized the other's soldering joint and they really like hated each other guts because of that like come on My dog is barking, and I have no bloody idea why. She likes to bark, but come on. Like that or like that. Okay, I will install the flight controller like that. So, okay, okay, and that means that over here I should cut the wires to more or less this length. Mm, I always, almost always like to make the wire slightly longer than they have to be uh, because it's super simple to, let's say, be over optimistic about your wires and when in the future you will have to make some adjustments, like I don't know, you decided to change the ESC um, because the ESC you were using before was, I don't know, you broke it or you just want to have something better or whatever then there might be a chance that just the soldering pad will be that much further away uh, comparing to the previous ESC. And then you have a problem because you will not be able to nicely, nicely put everything together. You might have to extend the wires, make them longer. This is always a major pain in the ass. So I just like add a few millimeters to every wire Maybe it doesn't look perfect, but might save you quite a lot of the problems in the future. Uh, Blix Band Beats, uh, I might. Uh, I might add some tape, but as the last step. Um, I'm not, I will not be laminating the wings. I decided I, I'm not... I, <laughs> This is just an another airplane. I don't really have enough of the time for, for the lamination. And I, I got it for free. So as you can imagine, it's just an airplane. If it will be ugly, then it will be ugly. Uh, and no, I will not be doing extra lamination. I have somewhere the film uh, if I really wanted to do it. But I could only probably laminate the wings because the lamination of the fuselage... Uh, there are just too many of the this is just too complicated of the of the shape uh, from my experience with lamination of the mini drag and the nano drag because my nano drag uh, is fully laminated right now <coughs> is that this is always a pita and if this is not a super expensive model I just do not have uh, enough of the will to to do it so no no extra lamination but I indeed might uh, add some extra tape uh, when I will assemble everything. And it will be just fine. Trust me. Trust me on that. I'm an expert. I know what I'm doing. 
Uh, how are the soldering pads on this thing? Not the not the best ones. Let me get the the helper tool so that I will be able to hold this ESC nicely during the soldering. Not the best one, not the best one, not the worst one. And this is the third time I'm putting those wires through this hole. Should have probably soldered the Okay. Okay. Not the best one, but will fly. Not the best one, but will fly. Yeah, uh, the third hand is... I don't like it, to be honest. Uh, I don't like it because it's always huge pita to position this thing correctly. Uh, the plastic thingies are not really like uh, super flexible and uh, comparing to the usefulness to the price of this thing, I personally think that I overpaid. So I'm not really the biggest fan of this thing. I have it. I use it. But that's basically all. Okay, not enough of the solder over here. You know what? I think that if not the fact that I am doing the stream, I would not be touching on this airplane for the next half a year. That's my gut feeling. And now let's see how the joints look on the other side. Eh, we'll have to improve them a little. So I might... I have a gut feeling that I might be doing those build streams slightly more often. Like two years ago, I... On one of my other channels, because I have several YouTube channels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like five and I'm not really joking I'm I'm absolutely not joking at this very moment I have like five YouTube channels I have this channel I have PS After Hours which is right now about the programming I have Pavo Makes vi YouTube when it's about uh, video making and uh, reviews and stuff I have the Paweł Spechalski channel in Polish when I publish some random crap and uh, usually use it to share some videos with my family. And at one point my kid wanted to have a YouTube channel, so I also have a YouTube channel for her. And she has like two videos, but she has them and she's super proud because she can right now say, oh, oh, oh I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> ah, but okay, okay. Um, ESCs look like they are soldered. So, uh, hmm. A question. Where is the signal? Okay, this is ground, this is current, this is 5 volt, this is ground. Okay. So, we will also have to solder the ground and the signal wires. So, uh, like two years ago, I did uh, actually two live streams when I was building the ZMR250. And turned out that quite a lot of people were interested in this live stream. I have no bloody idea why. Because there is not a single good reason why you should really build, and this was 2020, I think, uh, why you should build a ZMR250 in the de December of the 2020. Absolutely zero, zero, uh, I have to change the soldering tip again. Or should I solder through? No, I will solder through because then I will one more time do have to do the soldering on the AWG14 and I don't want to change the 
So that's the problem with the tequila sunrise. After mixing everything together, it no longer looks like a tequila sunrise. It looks like crap. At least it's sweet. Like, I don't know. I'm usually not drinking alcohol. Mm. Some time ago, actually a few years ago, I kind of discovered that I don't really like that much alcohol. And if I drink too much, next day I just feel horrible and on the longer run, it's just not worth it. So I stopped. Yet, quite recently, I discovered that on some levels, everything is simpler when you are slightly drunk. <laughs> um, so, no, I'm still not drinking alcohol, really like, on the regular basis. But if I want some, th there is absolutely no problem because I have shitload of alcohol at home. Because I was not drinking uh, all the alcohol I got because of the different different occasions. I was never drinking this alcohol, so I really have a pretty nice uh, collection of different different liquors. Tequilas, jeans, whiskies, vodkas, you name it. And right now when I have one of those cases that mm -hmm, I think I might want to have some, I just have some and this is not a problem. Okay, okay. And I don't like beer. Don't don't judge me. I don't like beer. At least I don't like lagers and uh, other beers with the hop inside. Uh, I don't like the taste of the hop. I okay. We'll fly. I do like. Weissbier. Good German Weissbier. This is something that I like. Uh, and partially because there is no hop in the Weissbier. Okay. ESC should fly. At least the signal part of the ESC should be fine. Okay. Now. Now let's see how this thing gonna fit. And... Uh, Let's see how the motor should actually be installed in this thing. Because to be honest, no. Uh, first, I think I will have to secure the flight controller. Yeah, definitely. First, I will secure the flight controller. By the way, uh, I use this thing over over everywhere. This is a 3M VHB tape uh, transparent. You can attach anything to anything. Uh, and it's easy to remove. Uh, quite strong, uh, pretty nice way to attach stuff to different stuff. If I have to attach anything to anything, the VHB tape is usually my first choice and I go with anything, something else only if the VHB uh, it's not really up to the task. Uh, okay. Should be fine. It's not that this is... Okay. Audio Geek FPV likes to watch streams when he's rebuilding or video editing. <laughs> good, good, good. I when I'm editing my videos because I of course editing my own videos. I have no one to edit my videos for me because I am a very small YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know why, but I cannot really listen to to anything in the background. I do have to have uh, super. Everything has to be super quiet in the uh, in the headphones. Uh, I th I discovered, kind of discovered, that I'm kind of sensitive to the bad audio. And uh, maybe it's only me. But recently, uh, but I 
think I learned how to distinguish between the dynamic and the condenser microphone. I just hear the difference. And uh, I'm not really sure which one I even prepare right now, because uh, previously I was using the condenser mic, uh, Rode and USB. Uh, I loved the sound of the condenser mic, but the problem with the condenser mic is they are slightly too sensitive. And uh, uh, and because the I do not even have doors over here, <laughs> over a sensitive microphone is kind of like a, like a problem. So I switched to to this thing, uh, to the dynamic microphone. A problem I has to have to keep my well, mouth slightly much closer than than previously. Uh, it sounds completely different. Uh, some people say that oh, it gi it gives you this nice radio look. Okay, maybe it's a nice radio look or radio feel. But I do think that I prefer the condenser microphones. Uh, this is and this is super strange that I'm cap capable to distinguish this because I always assume that my hearing sucks. Apparently, it doesn't really suck that much. So I everything has to be super quiet when I'm video editing. And okay. Okay, this is done. Now, now the motor. And how the hell am I supposed to install this motor? Does the instruction manual um bunker fest uh, I'm still playing with this microphone. I'm still playing with the equalizer on it and the compressor and every, everything. Uh, it took me quite a long to... I, I, because I'm not doing this very often. I'm not uh, EQing uh, mics as the thing I'm doing for a living. Uh, so um, if anybody knows anything about microphones and would like to see how my EQ looks like, uh, let me quickly show you how my EQ looks like on uh, this thing. So this is how my EQ on the microphone looks like. I have a relatively low voice and I like to boost my voice a little so I added some of around 300-400 Hz. Of course cut at the below 50 because well it's just a noise. And uh, this is even uh, this is my attempt to c cut the what was I cutting over here? Aha, this is the the cut for my nasal because I have a problem with my nasal cavities, and this is my nose is uh, blocked all the time, so I have a nasally voice, and I wanted to get rid of some of that, so I have a small notch over here. And then some brightness added over here. I don't know if this is really a very good EQ. I don't know how realistic this uh, this is, but this is what I did, and it seems to be kind of working. I even have the where do I have it? I even have the compressor set up. You see, I have a compressor. What a lovely so compressor over here, four to one of the ratio. Okay, maybe I'm not clipping right now with the threshold. I don't know. I don't know, and I don't know. If anybody over here knows anything about the audio, uh, please let me know. And maybe I should... Uh, I also experimenting with the uh, the Essers, but this is only during my uh, full videos. So, okay. How to install the motor? How to install the motor? I think the motor has to be glued in. I think so. No. No, the motor does not have to be glued in. This is strange. So how this motor should be installed then? I'm puzzled. Okay. Okay. So, Lemont, what's the difference in the sensations between the flying wing and the FPV drone? Depends. <laughs> I personally find the flying wings much more relaxing. Um, it's not that they are slow, 
but they are kind of, well, how to say it? Mm, you usually have more time uh, to do stuff. You cannot really push it as hard as the drone because of the reaction times and the fact that you have to have the altitude and the fact that uh, when you fly, you kind of are much more likely to be affected by the wind, etc., etc., etc. And uh, you can actually orient yourself only with the three degrees of the freedom. Uh, with the flying wing, you can only move forward. With the airplane in general, you can only move forward. You can roll and you can pitch. Uh, every maneuver that you are doing is uh, only based on your current speed and uh, throttle, of course, because that, that your speed depends kind of on the throttle and the uh, roll and the pitch. You have no possibility to do a yaw. Yes, uh, if you have rudder, then you can have some yaw, but flying wing, flying wings are not yaw compatible, so you will not do any, any yaw with a flying wing, really. And even if you have rudder, it's really like, no, it, it's completely different, uh, different sense. And uh, when you pitch down, you are losing altitude. When you pitch up, you are gaining altitude. And that means that uh, you cannot really fly with the flying wing as you fly with the, with the drone. Um, yet, when you open the throttle and you go really, 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 really low, you feel the speed. You really do feel the speed and you hear how, how loud this thing gets. Uh, you, are, you can fly further away, longer, higher. It's more like having a, view, a completely different feeling. Uh, yet, the flying wings and the airplanes in general have a problem of, well, there's much more hassle to fly with them because uh, they are bigger, you have to throw them, and the throw very often ends up with the small catastrophe, etc., etc., etc. So um, it's always kind of like the problem, uh, not always, but kind of from time to time a problem to do anything with the flying wing. Uh, Threadlock. If any, anybody asks you what's the biggest discovery of the 20th century in terms of the applied mechanics, it's the treadlock. It's, it's amazing what a treadlock can do. You do not have to worry about loosening threads. Uh, you do not have to worry, of course, not always and not in every circumstance, but you do not. It's just like... You apply a thread lock on the on the thread, and you have almost the guarantee. Yeah, sure. If you like exaggerate with the amount of the vibration, then yeah, everything can happen. But uh, your thread should not come loose. You do not have to worry about uh, uh, spacers, nylon locks, all that sh crap. You just apply the thread lock, and everything is fine. Um, if not treadlock, flying drones would be much, 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 much more complicated. And treadlock really less resolves a lot of the problem. Uh, by the way, um, in the hobby, on the hobby levels of the of the stuff, I do not find much difference between the brand treadlock, like the, from the 3M. Uh, or just uh, any other treadlock. Uh, on the professional, yeah, probably there is. But I'm using this thing I can just buy in Poland for like two bucks or maybe, no. Let's say four bucks, four to five bucks. And it works absolutely just fine, no problem. And yeah, Audio Geek, uh, correct, the airplanes are much more shaky. And they are much more shaky because they are much more affected by the... Uh, by the wind, uh, by the by the by the air, and any any hole in the air, and trust me, the air can be pretty pretty empty sometimes. <laughs> there can be pockets of the higher pressure, lower pressure. There can be pockets of the uh, hot air, cold air, uh, upwind, downwind, etc., etc., etc. 
uh, this thing is just shaky during the flight. Absolutely correct. But it's just a different, different, different way of flying. Let's call it like that. Okay, so how this thing should work? How the motor should be connected to the ESC? I think I should. Okay, okay, I. Okay, okay, I get it. There are just two holes on the sides on the fuselage. And now I just have to take extra screws and uh, screw this plate. Okay, that makes sense. I think those will be those screws. Uh, let me find a Phillips screwdriver. By the way, I always mix Philips with the Posidrif. I know how to choose a correct screwdriver for the for the for the screw uh, because, for example, this is a Posidrif or a Philips. Oh, this is wrong. I, I by the way, I chose the. This is <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, life lesson: uh, if the screw, the the cross on the screw, has some X marks on the 45 degrees that means you should get a screwdriver which also has those extra extra surfaces over here if however this is completely flat then you should get a screwdriver which does not have the extra surfaces over here this is how you distinguish between the Phillips and the Posidrif screw I don't I never remember which one is which one but over here I chose incorrectly and I have to take the second screwdriver correct one. Now I have the correct screwdriver for the screw. It fits perfectly. We can solder. What the solder? <laughs> what am I talking about? Too much of the tequila sunrise for me probably. Too much of the tequila sunrise. And okay. We are slowly installing Yeah, I really have no idea why we have two standards of the of those. Well, I know because of the business. <laughs> but really at one point someone could finally standardize on it. And uh, excuse me for a second. No, that was not a refill. Although I'm thinking about the refill. <laughs> no, that was my wife uh, asking me if, uh, if... Are you streaming? Well, yeah. Uh, okay. Probably she wanted me to uh, carry the groceries from the car. Oh, well. The groceries will have to carry them <laughs> themselves today. Hmm... Hmm, something is not working like it should be. I cannot install this screw in place. Can you hear the dog? Oh, interesting. My GoPro just shut down and I have no idea why the GoPro shut down. 
because I set it not to shut down. Okay, now the screw is locked in. But that doesn't it doesn't feel like the most secure screw in the world, to be honest. Yeah, I know, I know, because most of the forces we're gonna have right here, we're gonna be like pushing and it's gonna be a twist, shearing on the screw, will not be like pulling on the propeller. Still, it does not really feel like the best, uh, the strongly secured. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh, screw. Yeah, sorry about that. But the fuselage just hit the stream deck and switched the <laughs> the scene. So okay. Third screw and now the fourth screw and we can say that the motor is installed. It doesn't really look like the most secure installment of the motor ever, but let's hope it will be enough and that really the, the size of the motor is will be not really a problem and uh, everything will be working just fine. So we have the motor, we have the wires, now I think it will be time to put the wires from the ESC to the ESC compartment and solder the motor wires. By the way, how are we doing with the live stream? Um, interesting, 53 people watching this thing. That's, I do honestly have to tell you that this is above the average. Um, somewhere around uh, June last year, people stopped watching my live streams. I have no idea why, uh, but um, during, I don't know, April 2021 or something like that, I was even able to have around 100 people during the live stream. But then uh, it all went down. And now, however, more than uh, one year later, I seem to be getting slightly more of the views again. I don't know what's really the reason behind that. Uh, maybe people just started to love my channel again. Who knows? Who knows, who knows, who knows? But this uh, looks like the reality nowadays. And I do honestly have to say that I'm quite happy because I like streaming. And uh, actually the, the weekly streams uh, I had for more than a year. Uh, I really like that, but when people just stopped really participating in the streams and I was uh, streaming almost to no one, then me switching to streaming once a month instead of once a week seemed like uh, only solution. Now I might even consider going up to streaming every two weeks, who knows? Who knows, who knows, who knows? Maybe that's uh, that's the way to do. Um, Caustic FPV, I'm out of tequila. I'm out of tequila, so I might not really get a tequila sunrise, but we indeed might have a short break when I will try to make me something different. No idea what yet, but like I said, I have more or less the full cabinet of different alcohols so I should be able to, to procure me something who knows okay okay that that is that and now we only have to connect the... Ah, I have to shorten the wires first. They are too long. Tick. 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 Okay. 
and now let's solder and let's say that the powertrain of the Atom RC Dolphin Okay, lovely. The ESC has been soldered. I think I will add the conformal coating uh, because when I will close the ESC, I will not really want to open this thing again. So let me find the conformal coating. And not, not that it's, it's really highly required, but some kind of the conformal coating on the ESC is always a good idea. Uh, some people are applying, and I, I was one of them, uh, the liquid, liquid tape, something like that, uh, which looks like, a, well, a goo that you apply, uh, and this uh, makes the um, ooh, nitro, and this makes the protective layer. However, the just the conformal coating uh, like that, like an, in form of the varnish, is actually, I think, much more convenient in case of the ESC because it's also conducting the heat slightly better than the stink, uh, thick, rubberized uh, surface. And it also protects the ESC itself from, I don't know, landing on the wet grass or anything like that. Uh, Zbigniew. Zbigniew. Zbigniew uh, is asking excellent question. By the way, Zbigniew is asking the question in Polish, uh, but uh, Zbigniew, if you do not mind, I will answer the question in English. And uh, Zbigniew is asking why do we clean the uh, soldering tip with the, with the sponge, uh, the wet sponge. When you are soldering, uh, then uh, metal is not perfect. This is not only a metal. The metal is has impurities. The metal, the the the, the so solder has inside the flux and so on and so on and so on. And when you are soldering, then the the gunk is really like on the top of the of the soldering tip. Plus, there might be an uh, uh, oxide metal oxides and metal oxide and this gunk just prohibits a good uh, thermal energy transfer between the soldering tip and the soldering pad so we are cleaning the tip to more efficiently faster quicker and better transfer the heat from the soldering iron to the solder and the soldering pad this is the reason for that also when the uh, tip is uh, well basically if the tip is not clean by the way uh, this kind of a brass thingy is even better than the, the, the sponge then some of those impurities from the soldering tip will get to the soldering joint and then uh, you might not not in our cases but let's say in the professional usages this might impact the quality of the soldering uh, joint this is why this is just a good habit to clean the soldering tip before every soldering period. So this is this is why we are doing this to basically protect everything. Um, I think, and I think this is also a good idea. I will install the ESC in the MOSFET side on the bottom because uh, there we might have some airflow on this thing. Uh, no, Louis Simi FPV. Uh, I never waited like 24 hours uh, before I can solder. On the other hand, um, we are applying the conformal coating uh, after we soldered, and I have no absolutely intention of the of soldering anything else to this ESC. So uh, I think we should be just fine without absolutely, absolutely any problem. So. Uh, the ESC should be nicely secured right now and because this is not a professional work we can just probably close the ESC department right now. Yeah. Hmm. 
Okay. Not pretty. And if I would get a quality like that from the qu factory, I would be bitching about the low quality of the build. But because I'm building this for myself, any quality that is fine is fine. Over here on this channel, we are not really looking for the best possible quality. Um, I think I will design a better cover, 3D printed cover for the ESC. Uh, excuse me for a second. <laughs> my kids want to watch uh, Disney Plus, so I have to like always give them my phone. Plus, yeah, they want. So that's that. Louis Simi FPV, exactly. A uh, good conformal coating is not really something that will protect you from everything, uh, but landing uh, in the wet grass or, or something like that, it's just this extra, extra, extra measure that uh, makes your build slightly more resistant to the external conditions. Um, it's not really required. Uh, if you are, of course, not flying in the wets, and uh, by the way, uh, if you are thinking about using this, this, this is very important. This is not waterproof and watertight. Any kind of those liquid tapes are not waterproof and watertight uh, because you are just peeling this thing off. Uh, that means that it's not really chemically connected uh, to the to the surface. It's protecting, so uh, the water can can get under this thing. However, this thing has much better adhesion to the surface, and is actually waterproof. I'm not saying that you should waterproof everything and put conformal coating on everything. On the other hand, it's like slightly less than half a bottle, and I have this bottle for like six years. So uh, it's one time investment uh, and uh, you are good actually for years and most probably this thing will just uh, be useless because of the age, not because of the fact that I use too much uh, of this thing. It's a low cost and uh, yeah, just, just an extra, extra measure. Okay. So on the ESC, on the powertrain side, I think the only thing that is right now left is to solder the mains and the leads to the battery. <laughs> Blix Band Beats uh, wrote that uh, double coated Runcam hybrid uh, more because I heard they were known for components popping of the boards. I don't really think that conformal coating will solve that. I no, I don't. I don't think that the conformal coating will protect anything from popping from from the board, uh, because the the bond that the conformal coating can apply is much less than really the the bond that the bond that the solder uh, has. So this was just a crappy soldering. Oh, interesting. I know why my hero shut down. Because it said that the camera is too hot. Ha! On the other hand, I think this is a problem with uh, a lot of GoPros recently, they are just overheating. More or less after one hour, the camera is really indeed bloody hot. Hmm. The camera is indeed bloody hot and looks like it overheated and it will decide that no, I will not work. So uh, that kind of sucks. Okay, let's let's give it a moment and let's see if the GoPro will. Uh, cool itself down. So it's a good thing I have this camera on top. And uh, this camera is apparently not overheating and costed like half of the money of the GoPro. It is much more useful. 
<laughs> I don't know uh, how many of you are into the uh, the photography, but recently I started buying used uh, photographic gear, and you know what? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it because you really can get a lot of stuff for super cheap, at least much cheaper than the new stuff, and this is nice. And very often, not always, but of course, very often the the amateur photographs are usually taking care of their equipment. If, of course, you got something, I try not to buy used hardware from the professionals because the professional will sell you its hardware only when he used uh, and use and uh, abuse this uh, enough not because he just like switching to the new model because he feels like after you buy an uh, equipment from the professional photographer that means uh, that usually but not always that usually that it was just used long enough the professional photographer that is using this hardware well to to pay the rent uh, will not sell you the something that's still in the excellent condition because if the professional photographer still can use this thing hardware to uh, earn money he will do it he will do it so but if you buy from the hobbyists uh, very often is the quality is just amazing not always but quite often is uh, just amazing and if you can pay like half or not not come on not half uh, much 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 less than the new hardware then kudos for you and uh, not sure how this thing looks like in your places where you are living but over here the lenses especially the good lenses not the cheap lenses but really the good lenses are usually half the price uh, when they are used so that makes absolutely absolutely a lot of sense so instead like paying one thousand dollars for the lens you can pay like five hundred uh, dollars for a lens and it's actually usually fine however you've the new new stuff just feels better a lot better in your hands because it's new it's shiny and uh, yeah you know what i mean okay fantastic 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 and now now I can turn off the soldering iron and now we will be able to run the motor test. By the way, uh, advice when you are building something, uh, install the uh, plug on the uh, on the battery wire as the last thing because uh, you want to balance the airplane before you will say how long the the wires to the battery should be this is why today i will not be installing uh, the battery plug it makes no sense i will leave it to one of the last steps when okay i will make strip this slightly longer when uh, the whole airplane will be ready and uh, I will find the the proper balance, etc., 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 etc. In the meantime, in the meantime, let me find the leads to the PSU because we're gonna do the motor test. Piotr Malinowski, hello, Luisimi, but why won't you be using the conformal coating, man? Come on, come on, come on, come on, let's be honest. Um, by the way, one of the best tools on my workbench is the Toolkit RC P200 uh, power supply. It's really amazing what this small power supply can do. I will not show you this to you right now, 
because I use it at the same time to power the main camera you see over here. Actually, it powers this camera. And right now I also will be using to this thing to power the uh, the motor on this thing. So, so okay. Okay. This thing over here, this thing over here. And I have no idea what kind of the flight controller software I can install over there. So, I suppose I will have to... Connect to the INAV configurator and we will see what's going on on the software site and we will also flash the latest uh, INAV into this thing. Because... Why not? Oh. FC is beeping. And FC stopped the beeping. So... Com 11 and we have INAF 3.1. So yeah, we definitely flash it with the latest INAF because come on, this is INAF 3.1. This thing is like one year old, maybe even slightly longer. So let's quickly flash the latest INAF. Uh, we have Matek H7 for not Mamba. We have Matek H743, full chip erase, Matek. But why do I have 3.1? Ah, okay. Okay, so 5.1 Matek H7, load firmware. Have I clicked the button? Ah, now I clicked the button. So I clicked the button and let's go. Kraken 81 from Minorca, whoop whoop, uh, late, late vacation. <laughs> uh, Peter, yes, I applied it 10 minutes ago and I'm powering up now, exactly. Uh, but this is a conformal coating, it will not, nothing wrong will do, nothing wrong will happen if I will just power it up right now. Because this is, this is not conductive. This is very important. This is not conductive. So even if this is not yet ready, uh, nothing really bad will happen. So so we are absolutely fine on this thing. So the board is still erasing, 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 flashing. So no, this is not water. So no, this is not conductive. Everything should be should be fine. Willy, Dave, yes, exactly. Willy says that it's not possible to build any electronic project without the tiny P200. Yes, I love the P200. It's like really the, the centerpiece of my setup. I'm uh, Piotr, this is this is super amazing, amazing power supply. I'm charging phones. I power this my MacBook from this thing. I power the camera. I power everything around me. So it's really a really wonderful piece of uh, technology. I'm super happy that the Toolkit RC a Radio Master actually, well, the company that both owns both brands <laughs> created this thing uh, because it's really superb. It's really, really, really superb. Um, there was a question from uh, uh, Piotr Malinowski. Can coating process be reversed? Uh, this stuff, you just solder through it. Uh, the MG Chemicals uh, silicon conformal coating, you just solder through it. If you want to solder the solder, you just put the soldering iron on the joint and uh, heat makes this thing like go away so absolutely not a problem and it's not blocking uh, absolutely anything so the INAF was successful we will be doing airplane without a tail lovely 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 let's see what's gonna happen next uh, 
Okay, accelerometer calibrated, compass calibrated, runtime calibration failed. <coughs> Excuse me. We will disable the magnetometer. We don't care about the magnetometer, so we will just make this thing go away. Uh, save and reboot. Okay, runtime calibration this time succeeded and the orientation of the board. So, okay, I have to rotate the board. So let's let's do the flip. So your degrees to 70. No, not 0 0.1. Come on. Yep. 270 let's see if i was right because i never remember if this is clockwise or counterclockwise i forget every single time and uh, i was wrong <laughs> it should be 90 not uh, 270 so 90 save and reboot Uh, Peter, uh, this is the VTX that came with the the thing. This is this thing has the. This is Axis TX15 from Atomrc. Atomrc, uh, I don't know how many watts it has, but it has active cooling, so I expect it has the shitload of power. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but by the way, I the set I got was the FPV set, so it actually had everything besides the receiver. Oh, in talking of, about receivers, uh, look what I got, and a lot of FPV pilots, I, fixed wing pilots, will be super happy with what I'm about to show you. I got two Express LRS compatible receivers uh, from the Radio Master. One is the ER5A and the second one ER5C. And what's cool about them is that they have five channel uh, PWM outputs. So you can connect uh, motor and four servos directly to the receivers. And this is actually pretty cool uh, because you don't need any kind of the SBUS to, to PWM converters. And if you are just a fixed wing pilot with the traditional no stabilization, no flight controller, anything like that, you just put this thing uh, into your build and you are done. Uh, and they are HV. I have no idea what the HV means, but they can run up to 8 volts. 8.4 so on 2s without absolutely any problems so no sorry this has four pwm outputs and the fifth one is the on off pwm i don't know why this is needed but okay uh yeah so four outputs and the fifth one is on off yeah okay because this is how the express lrs works exactly but i think express lrs 3 changed that so this is not a problem. Two antennas, so pretty nice set. I will probably be doing some uh, of the longer material on this thing, as well as on the many flight controllers I have over here. By the way, here, like here, I have like a pile right now of different flight controllers. So, mm, too many and i have no idea when i will make the videos about all of them okay i think it's time to see if the motor now works so outputs standard we don't care about the telemetry we don't have the telemetry save and reboot Yeah, exactly. Exactly. With the bloke uh, with the Express LRS3, you do not have that only channels after 5 are on off. So this is actually pretty cool. So uh, let's go here. And uh, yeah, I think it's time to power up. Okay, motor beeped. That means uh, it looks kind of positive. Let's see what's going to happen. And the motor is even spinning. Lovely. 
lovely, fantastic, outstanding. This is what this is what we want, but we probably also should calibrate now the motor. So let me quickly calibrate the motor. Do, do. Great. So, um, the motor apparently is working. We have not... No, it's not working. It's grinding. The motor is not working. I have no idea what I did, but the motor is not working. Just like one of the phases is out. Yeah. So what have I done? Maybe I have to switch to D-Shot. Let's see what's gonna happen if I will switch to the D-Shot. Mm -mm. ESC is dead. Either ESC is dead or something wrong just happened because after calibration the ESC is no longer working like it should be working. So it's either the motor, one of the phases is dead, but it doesn't smell in any way. It doesn't smell over here uh, or the ESC is dead. That's not a good sign. Uh, what we can do, we can we can connect to the ESBL Heli configurator, and let's see what's gonna happen. But the motor was working and then stopped working. Rest in pepperoni. Yeah, quite probably exactly this is what happened. Why? Who knows? BL Heli Configurator. Where do I have the BL Heli Configurator? Does it have BL Heli 32 or just the BL Heli? Uh, no, I don't want to download the latest BL Heli. So let's plug the flight controller. Connect multiple ESCs. Okay. No, so this is not the BL Heli 32, so we will have to test with BL Heli, regular BL Heli. So disconnected. Uh, BL Heli suit. Mm hmm. But this seems like one of the phases on the motor is dead. Okay, now... Yeah, so that was that. That was that. Uh, PPM, center throttle, everything looks okay. Delay, startup power, temperature protection, low RPM protect. <laughs> uh, Motor timing, right, okay, so disconnect, restart, and let's see right now if it will help in any way, because if it will not help in any way, then I will have to replace the ESC, not that I'm very much like surprised because well the ESC doesn't was not really looking like the strongest ESC ever but it's been a while <laughs> since I lost the ESC I really don't remember when was the last time I lost the ESC especially still on the workbench or this is the motor or I Pepsi the motor but I have no idea how and when because the motor was only like running for a few seconds, so that's not that. Okay, 
So this goes here, this goes here on electronic side of the ESC works. Yeah. ESC is dead. Absolutely. Excuse me. So the ESC is dead. That was fast. <laughs> uh, that was fast. I Pepsi DESC. Um, okay, my bad. So let's just quickly run the quickly postmortem on this thing. See if we can get any visible signs of the of smoked ESC or smoked motor. And uh, no, the Roybert. I don't think it's shorted. I don't think it's shorted. I think it just because there's nothing to be shorted on. I think. If anything happened, there was the Volter spy uh, because I have not installed any of the capacitor, extra capacitor, and the power supply uh, disconnected because of the Volter spike. So if anything happened, I think that just one of the phases, one of the MOSFETs, got shorted because of the Volter spike. So yeah, that does it. That was the ESC we were using, and we won't be using this ESC anymore. However, uh, we will also not be replacing this ESC today, because it's... Well, we will have to finish soon. Uh, so that means that I will have to do it either on the next stream, or just like uh, off-camera. But definitely the ESC is Pepsi. At least that's the working assumption right now to bet to bet to bet to bet but well better now than in flight because in flight extra stuff might get might happen here nothing really dramatic happens it's just the esc that died Doo -doo -doo. Do, do, and final test. Nah, Pepsi. Absolutely Pepsi. So that does it. Too bad. Too bad, too bad, too bad. And that also means that we won't be building anything uh, today anymore because it just makes absolutely no sense for us to do so. Because if we would, then I would have to like <laughs> cancel half, half of the work I uh, done already. I probably what I will do, uh, not sure if I will make the next live stream or if I will just do this thing uh, off camera, but uh, I will find out a good nice big... Uh, huh. Huh. I forgot to install the wires. <laughs> But it's fine. Uh, but it's fine. Uh, good big uh, capacitor to protect this thing from further voltage spikes. Uh, and then... And then... Fuck. What I hate about those flight controllers from Matek is that... They have those spacers, plastic spacers that you put on the stands of. And every time you do anything with the flight controller, those things are just flying around left and right and you can never really find it. So uh, I will install a big nice uh, capacitor. Maybe we're going to have a nice next live stream. Who knows? Because that's kind of interesting to have this lovely talk with you guys. 
while still building. I have a motivation to build you have the way to kill some of the time, because why not? And I will install... what I will install... I think I will install the 35 amp uh, Holy Bro Teco. I should have a couple of those and they never failed me yet or maybe I will find one or two Z, uh, ZTW Spider um, big and chunky old generation ESC uh, that I'm using in few of my not 40 amps 40 amps I'm using this thing in a few of my builds and I have not lost a single one uh, as well and uh, that does it still too bad uh, to bet, but like I said from the very beginning, well, the the ESC was not really looking like the biggest boy ever. Maybe that's that. Maybe maybe something completely different happened. Maybe maybe one of the phases on the motor uh, got damaged. I will know when I will replace the ESC. Uh, yeah 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 yeah. And it was supposed to be such a lovely day. Lovely day. A lovely day. Anyhow, so. Um, okay, while I will finish the, the stuff over here, let's uh, figure out what we do and what when we do it next. I think that the next uh, live stream, regular live, live stream with me asking your questions and talking about crap, uh, will happen uh, next Saturday, uh, probably at uh, 8 a.m. No, 8 a.m. <laughs> 8 p.m. Central European time, uh, because my wife uh, is going out of town, and I will have to drive my daughter to the swimming pool. So uh, I will just not be able to finish uh, to go home before uh, seven, 8 p.m. Basically, so most probably at 8 p.m. And there is also a chance that we're gonna have a next live stream about this thing. Uh, INAF6, because I know that some people are already asking questions uh, what about INAF6 and when we gonna might see INAF6. The INAF6 will not happen most probably this year. Uh, most probably that's the assumption right now that the INAF6 will go in the beginning of the next year. Uh, really like two releases uh, every year. This is too fast. We are developing too fast and uh, slightly to slightly slow down the development cycle might actually be a good idea. So uh, that's that. Um, on the other note, on the other note, I don't think I have any other notes. I would like to thank everyone. Uh, to, to thank everyone for uh, for joining me on this uh, wonderful Saturday evening. It's amazing that you had nothing better to, <laughs> to do. Um, also, turns out that using the GoPro as the streaming camera, uh -uh, this thing just overheats after uh, an hour of usage, so that's not a good sign. I don't want to buy a third camera. <laughs> Fuck, but it's always something. Uh, I have no idea, uh, Audio Geek FPV, what's the max size of the propeller I will be flying with the 7-incher. Uh, to be honest, I'm not even sure that uh, the 7-incher is really like uh, okay, because this motor doesn't really seem like to be the biggest motor ever. Yet, on 4S, I think it should behave quite nicely, I think, I hope. Uh, but one more, one more thing about the Dolphin. You have to admit, and... You just have to admit that this thing, uh, okay, let me quickly assemble everything. That this thing looks dope. This is a very, very, very nice looking airplane. No questions about that. I do think that the... Atom RC did an extremely good thing in designing a lovely airplane. Looks super dope. So, yeah, if only I had enough time to fly everything I have. <laughs> 
but that's uh, that's a completely completely different thing. Okay, so I think we will be slowly ending for today. One more time, thank you, thank you for joining me. Most probably we would uh, go further. Probably I had a plan to install the servos and also test the servos, but because of the dead ESC, we will not be doing that. So thank you very much for coming and uh, thank you very much we will see most probably next saturday so ciao